So that's why we consider our glow such an opportunity for unity and for the body of Christ to gather here in Nevada County and beyond. It's almost become regional, a glow, and we're so thankful that each and every one of you is with us. And special welcome to a glow, and thank you, Joan, for doing what we encourage everybody to do is to bring a friend to a glow because it's a unique opportunity for the body to gather to worship in the spirit and in truth and the liberty that God has provided for us and to really answer Jesus' prayer that we would love one another and and uh, be his expression here on earth. You know, that's our greatest, our greatest testimony of who he is, that we can cross denominational lines and come together and celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Well, we have a few announcements for you today. Uh, our good friend Lou Ann Lee, who is the pastors, along with her husband Cedric, the um, Celebration um, Community Fellowship, formerly of, um, of Meadow Vista, they have now moved to an Auburn location. And wow. they're on uh, Nevada Street in Auburn. And Lou Ann is going to be having a uh, concert to raise money for a Philippines mission trip that they're going to be taking. And this event will be on August the 19th, a Friday night from 6 to 8 p.m. There'll be, there'll be two showings, I think one at 6 and one at 8. And uh, so she wants to, all of her Aglow friends to know about that. If you want to check out that information on her website, which is uh, ccfellowship.org. And for next uh, month, she'll have some flyers here for us uh, to remind us of that event. But we know Luann has a real heart for missions and helping people. And so uh, we want to support her in every way we can. All right, now I'm going to ask Trifina to come up, who is our GLOW Vice President, and share with you some of the opportunities that she has available at Sanctuary International for your um, personal growth and spiritual blessing. Hey, you have little brochures on your table. Um, we have some really wonderful women that the Lord has provided that have, are willing to come and do just a mini conference. At, at the sanctuary. It's a Friday night, all day Saturday. Friday night, they start out with their testimony because nothing is more important than, and powerful than our testimony. So they tell you where they've come from and where what God's done in their life. And then the next day, they minister to you with what, from what God has given them. And our first uh, speaker that the July conference that you, we talked about last month has been postponed, so we're going right straight to August. But um, sign up quick because, as you know, it's a sanctuary. It's, it's not a large place. And so it's a small, intimate time of ministry. And that's what I really encourage you about it, because it's really nice, because it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one ministry that happens there. And Michelle Wright will be our speaker the, on August 12th through the 13th. And her uh, theme is celebrating you, who you are, and the great things God is able to do in your life today. And uh, as you look inside there, you'll see her uh, schedule of, of speaking uh, sessions and stuff. And, you know, I'm just going to highlight that one, and you can look at the other ones that are coming up right after that. But um, I just really encourage you. It's, we keep the costs low. You get to have a, a, a lunch with it, and if it, if it goes over, there will be a little dinner, too. <laughs> and so, um, but it's what a wonderful time to draw together, have some fellowship, be ministered to, be encouraged. And it's, yeah, it's just an opportunity that God has provided. So I just encourage you to pick up those flyers. If you need more flyers, I have more with sites. And what's your website? Is that, it's it's on, on the flyer, right? Yeah. My website is on the flyer, and it's just sanctuary-international.org, and a lot of the information is, again, on there, too. Okay? And now I want to give um, our worship leader, George, and, uh, George Parker, George and Lily, have made such a commitment to a glow. It's absolutely phenomenal. So much of what happens here it happens because of the anointing that they uh, bring with them their heart of unity in the body of Christ and they've been so faithful faithful to lead us into the presence of the Lord over these many many years I'm thinking that this is commitment so anyway George in the, in the recent um, few weeks has had the opportunity to put together a, a worship inspirational uh, DVD that we want to share with you and I'll let him talk about that but I think as I was reviewing this last night I, I believe you, if you open your heart you're going to be Encourage. I'm sure there, there's a there's an image, there's a phrase, there's a um, there's just a chorus in here that I believe will really bless and encourage your heart if you'll open your heart to it today. The Lord just really prompted on my heart to take a song that I, that I had written probably ten years ago, um, just this last week, and create a, a multimedia video for it. And I just was really prompted to get it out there for some reason. And um, 
I've been getting responses left and right from people all over saying that is exactly what I needed to hear right now. So this song is called God is Our Refuge and Our Strength. Nations may rage, kingdoms they may fall down, mountains may shake, but God is our refuge and strength. We will not fear. Waters may roar, and though the earth should. will not be oh there is a river flowing from the throne as long as god is in his temple you shall never be alone he will be your helper at the break of dawn the lord of hosts is with you and he is strong we will not may fall down, mountains may shake, but God is our refuge and strength, we will not fear. Waters may roar, and though the earth should will not be oh there is a river flowing from the throne as long as god is in his temple you shall never be alone he shall be your helper at the break of dawn the lord of hosts is with you and he is strong His temple, you shall never be alone. He shall be your helper at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with you, and He is strong. We will not God is in his temple, you shall never be alone, he shall be your helper at the break of dawn, the Lord of hosts is with you, and he is strong, there is a river flowing from the throne, as long as God is in his temple, you shall never be alone, Helper at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with you, and he is strong, will not be.
You know, weren't you encouraged by that? You know, the, the scripture says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in, in our God. And we can run into him. He is our refuge, our strength. We need to be reminded that in times of trouble, there's no place to run but into his loving arms. Amen. Amen. To have our guest speaker today, Cheryl Edwards, and her husband Terry are here with us in South Lake Tahoe Christian Fellowship. And to tell you the truth, this is a day that I have looked forward to for uh, quite a long time because I feel it's the the fulfillment of uh, the answer to some prayers that we prayed from Pray Nevada County in uh, on the last um, probably the last Tuesday of June in 2005 from uh, Edith and Leon Colas's deck when they were on vacation. They allowed us to go up there and we had been praying in Empire Mine Historic Park and one Tuesday uh, the Lord said, uh, I want you to pray from the high places, from a high place. Yeah. And so uh, closest by the high place that we knew was uh, Edith and Leon's uh, deck that you can practically see in Utah from there, at least into Nevada <laughs> from their deck. And so. There was a small group of us up there, and we prayed four prayers, very specifically. We said, um, Isaiah 64, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. We prayed, Open up ye ancient gates, open up ye doors, that the Lord of glory would come yes. in. And George, to see those images of the gates today and the doors, uh, that was, I think, just a prophetic connection of what God has really done. We prayed that God would be glorified in the media, and we prayed that he would help us to establish relationships with people in Reno, uh, Tahoe, Car uh, Carson City, Truckee, and, and beyond, kind of to the east as we were facing the east. And um, that was on a Tuesday. The following Sunday in the news, uh, we saw the headlines that um, there had been a 4.8 earthquake in Truckee uh, that had been uh, captured on videotape. The effects of that had been captured on videotape. Uh, by Wendy Mullen, who was filming her husband Eric's service on a Sunday morning, and um, it made the news. She had this little clip of when the earthquake hit, you could just see the rumble go through the floor. Uh, Eric was standing in front of a, a door, in front of a kitchen situation where it would roll down door, you could just see the move of the earthquake go up that door. And um, then the following Tuesday, in our local paper, the headlines were, Templar punctuates pastor's message. And actually, Eric had been um, had been preaching about Paul and Silas, who were in prison, praising the Lord. And when he said the word earthquake, God coincided that 4.8 earthquake with his word earthquake. Kaboom, this thing just rolls through the thing. People are jumping, shouting, you know, celebrating. Woohoo! You know, God has just showed up. It was really amazing. But the, our local newspaper reported it as Tuesdays earthquake. Now we had prayed the previous Tuesday for that God would rend the heavens and come down that he would, the mountains would tremble before him. Uh, and all these things. So after seeing that in the newspaper, we made contact with with Eric and Wendy Moen. We went up there and uh, and began to get to know them and uh, from that um, I met Rick and Teresa McKinney and through the McKinney's met the uh, Edwards who pastor and uh, pastor for 33 years of Lake Tahoe Christian Fellowship. And before I introduce uh, Cheryl, our speaker, I just feel that this couple is so key to our own personal spiritual heritage because uh, Terry has just written a book in the last few months called The Smartsville Revival. Now, how many of you know where Smartsville is? If you're heading down toward uh, Marysville, you see that little sign. If you've ever taken that little sign and followed out a mile or so, you see that there's not much there right now, but that was a hub of spiritual revival in our area, probably the most significant local revival that we have experienced. The, the manifestations of have just spun out and have really changed the world for uh, the, its world legacy that started right there. Many people that we know and love have been influenced by pastors who were raised up in that uh, movement. And um, Terry and Cheryl were, were hippies. I don't want to give the whole story away, but hippies who were looking for uh, spiritual reality in all the wrong places, like many of us were. And uh, when God got a hold of them, they, they had the capability of just sharing that joy with many, many other people. And, um, 
and they basically took over the town of Smartsville for probably about 15 years or so, wasn't it, Terry? It was probably more like seven or eight. Seven or eight? <laughs> Evangelistically speaking, okay. Yeah. Seven or eight. But it, uh, they, they dominated over there. And so um, they, Terry has his book here. It's on the back table of the Smartsville Revival. If you'd like to purchase a copy, it's $10. I really suggest that you do this because, I mean, you will get an idea of what God can do with you know, just humble beginnings and how you can spin people out to really impact the world. Now I want to introduce our speaker, Cheryl uh, Edwards, if you'll come up, Cheryl. Cheryl and Terry have been pastoring the Lake Tahoe Christian Fellowship for 33 years, and what one of the things I love about their um, model for ministry is that they co-pastor. Yeah. You know, that's what God says, is that His image is represented through the man, the man and the woman. Together they are the full expression of himself on earth. And these two are mightily gifted. Uh, Cheryl heads up the Sozo ministry. Does that word ring a bell to many people? Sozo. Uh, and it's kind of about inner healing, getting in touch with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit in a way that you have not before. I had a close encounter myself with Cheryl and her partner there. And uh, it, it really makes a difference in your life in terms of opening up your heart to inner healing and really getting to the root issues uh, in your life and connecting with the source of all love, who is our Heavenly Father. So, Cheryl, uh, we're so honored to have you with us today, and we know you brought something from the heart of God for us, and take your liberty, and we're just so honored to have you here. Many. All right, I'll get out of your way. <clears throat> so appreciate Linda, our sister Linda. She's such a wonderful catalyst in the kingdom of heaven yeah. get things done it's very exciting to get to know her better and it's nice to be in an area where people know where Smartville is yeah. <laughs> usually you, we talk about the Smartville or people Smartville and you tell them it's by Timbuktu and they really think you're crazy <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it was just actually I just met someone from Rough and Ready and then they tell you if you tell somebody it's by Rough and Ready and they, then they really think you're crazy again but um, <clears throat> we lived in Smartville for probably oh, three, three or four years, and then the ministry just exploded. We had businesses. We had houses in town. Uh, we had several buildings in Smartville itself. We had the big house, and then we bought several of the houses in there, and then um, we lived there, and then we moved around. There was different houses in town. And I remember the first... Um, I wasn't really excited about moving into the house, Smartville house. And my husband said, we're going to buy this house with my brother and two other people. And we're just going to see what the Lord does and just invite whoever. Because back then there was a lot of hippies hitchhiking, whatever. They'd invite whoever to come in and live there and be discipled to get saved. And I wasn't very excited about that. And um, I remember the first revelation I got. I had all my kitchen stuff in the kitchen. You know how women are about their kitchen and their kitchen stuff. And all these people using all of my stuff and um, breaking things. And um, my first revelation was um, I went to the bedroom upset one day. And he goes, the Lord goes, what's more important, your blender or your sister? So that was like my, my first revelation in the Morning Star House. So the Lord began, gave me a love. For the people there, the sister, the women there, my husband and I were in full-time ministry, probably three months old in the Lord. Um, women were looking at me like I was supposed to know everything, and I would just open the Bible and act like I did. And somehow God blessed it. <laughs> We've been actually been in ministry for 40 years um, in Morning Star, and then later, uh, I don't know if you know of Church of Glad Tidings, the... I don't, I don't know if that's still the name, <clears throat> but is it Church of Glad Tidings in Yuba City? That was our um, church that was started out of Smartville, and then we sent a team to Tahoe, sent a team to San Francisco, sent a team to Sacramento, and that's how we ended up in Tahoe was um, <clears throat> the pastor that started the church was my husband's best friend, grew up with him in Smartville area. Actually, he lived in Timbuktu, my husband's best friend. And um, he took the church. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> he took the church in uh, Tahoe. It was a team. And I was sent out. And later they bought a building. And he later passed away um, with cancer. He was in Vietnam. And they think Agent Orange it was affected by him. And then uh, shortly after that, the, we felt the call. And uh, my husband felt the call. And then later I got the call. That's why I'm so appreciative of my husband. He always waits for me 
to get a confirmation. He doesn't just run ahead and then drag me along. He had the call to come from uh, Marysville. We lived in Marysville then, and we're helping him. He was assistant pastor at the church of Glad Tidings. <clears throat> he got the call to move to Tahoe probably a year before um, my, I got the confirmation and the call to go. So it's a blessing being in ministry with your husband, with especially with my husband. He's so kind and always appreciates me and my side of things, which is usually different from his side. But it's nice when we have different sides because we get God's side because each one of us, he loves to hear from each one of us because we're also uniquely designed by him. Um, I just wanted to briefly, uh, you have notes on your table, um, talk about, uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, uh, Mike Bickle and IHOP International House of Prayer in Kansas City? Well, um, we, uh, how many of you are familiar with the Toronto Blessing, the outpouring? Uh, we were really impacted by the Toronto Blessing, and um, it was kind of like a time where the, where the Spirit of the Lord came and just breathed and blew on the body of Christ, actually to soften more of our hearts, more to receive more of Him for the what, what's coming ahead, which, what we're in now. And um, I was really impacted in the Toronto Blessing. I was kind of at a place of kind of weariness and burnout in ministry, and um, the Lord blessed me with um, visitations and I got the holy laughter like for days, and he did a lot of emotional healing with me just from laughing, which was really cool. And um, and then I uh, we actually heard Mike Bickle in Toronto when we heard him speak about his whole thing is <clears throat> basically intimacy with the Lord yes. and um, your one-on-one -on -one connection with Him, which is the most important thing. Uh, when we first heard him, we just I was so impacted because. I've always been uh, a person that pers I love to, I, like I know probably a lot of you love his presence. It's like when I got saved, I said, my husband got saved first and he was sharing with me. I said, what is this I feel? He says, the Lord's presence, just ask him into your heart. And I went to the bathroom, asked him in about 20 times crying and was born again. And I just have loved the Lord, always loved the Lord's presence. And in the whole uh, Toronto Blessing, which was 94 through... 2000, whatever, it was so strong. The Lord's presence was so strong. And he would, um, and then I listened to Mike Bickle, and he began to give a language to what I was always have experienced with the Lord and always have kind of enjoyed with the Lord. He gave a language to it. And um, so I began to study his um, material. And now, you know, he has an international house of prayer 24-7, Praying like the Tabernacle of David, um, ihop.org if you're interested. And he has a whole message on the bridal paradigm. Are you anybody familiar with the bridal paradigm? Um, well, I'll just tell you a paradigm, what a paradigm is, a, it's a point of view or perspective. And it's the lens through which we interpret our world view, or it could be our Christian view. Uh, the bridal paradigm is the view of the kingdom of God through the eyes of a cherished bride, who, which is what we are, who is fascinated with the beauty of Jesus as the bridegroom God. And um, it's actually, uh, it's a affectionate-based Obedience. There's there's three different kinds of obedience. There's affectionate based obedience. There's obedience by faith, and there's fear based obedience. Affectionate based obedience is this is an this is an obedience that flows from experiencing Jesus' love. We understand that He has affections for us, and we experience an impartation of it back to Him. It is the strongest kind of obedience because it results in the deepest and most consistent obedience. A lovesick person will embrace and do anything for the sake of love. Uh, obedience by faith, which is, we all have too. Um, this is an obedience that we walk in when we don't necessarily feel anything, which we all go through that, right? 
And we are called to walk in faith as obedient children, knowing that doing so pleases God. And then the fear-based obedience, the obedience flows from fear of punishment or consequences of disobedience. Though it works well in times of temptation, it is not enough by itself to resist the pleasure of sin in the long run. Um, God's nature and personality is filled with tender, loving emotions for his people. And God sees us through a heart that is filled with tender love. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And Mike has a phrase which I love. He says, lovers make better workers. Um, because he says, you know how when you're in love, when you fall in love with your spouse, you just will do anything. I mean, you will just do anything. Love is the most powerful motivator of anything. <laughs> love will just cause you to just sacrifice. Just like when you have a baby, you don't mind sacrificing for that baby, for your children. We all know what it's like for our children. Well, the Lord, um, in John 17, 26, this was his last prayer that he prayed. I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. So the Lord's last prayer was his love would be in us. And that love would, would be towards the Father. The love that the Father put in Jesus would be in us for the Father. So um, it says we seek to love God with all our heart because God loves us with all his heart. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my husband and I, we've been in ministry for 40 years. People say, how do you do this for so long? Well, if you put this first and not... It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then love your brothers yourself. If you put loving God first with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you get the fuel to keep going to love your brother, to serve, to do, which a lot of the body of Christ puts more emphasis on doing than being. Mike has a phrase, uh, we, be, we, be, uh, we become what we behold. And he has a phrase of beholding the Lord. Yes. It's like when you sit quietly before the Lord. Are you guys familiar with soaking? Yes. When you put like music on and you just behold the Lord. Or you take a scripture and you meditate on that scripture in your heart. You're beholding the Lord, heart in your, in your, as you're uh, soaking. Um, this, and... The, a real good book, which some people get confused about, but Mike has really opened up this book of the Song of Solomon to describe um, the Lord's love for us. And actually, the whole book of uh, the Song of Solomon is actually about our relationship with the Lord, His relationship with us, and actually what we go through in the song. You know, it's actually about our walk. Sometimes the Lord, it's, it, there's a part of the song where it says, She's running through the street. She's going, Is it, has anyone seen my beloved? And it's like, he's hiding. Sometimes he likes to hide. I says, the Lord likes to hide and seek. He likes to hide so we can go seek him deeper and more. Because he wants us to be more hungry for him. But all of the song is um, about our walk. And it's how the Lord feels about us. Um, Jesus, the first revelation of Jesus' passion affections and it's the first revelation. He has affections and he enjoys us. And he has emotions. He's passionate for us. He, he's tender, loving, kind. He's joyful. Mike says, do you know that I, I did a study actually. He says, you know, my, God is mostly, people think that, um, well, they think they, they love Jesus, but they're not really sure about the Father. They think, well, maybe the Father's kind of up there and he's kind of mad and <sighs> scary. But, you know, they're all one. They're all the same. And, you, and they're mostly glad, not mad. And there's more scriptures on God being glad and happy than mad. So we can be happy. And um, there's... Uh, Mike has this thing about if we study God's emotions or meditate on God's emotions, which are loving, kind, merciful, joyful, long-suffering, um, just all those beautiful things, those are emotions. 
He has emotions. We were created in his image. A lot of people think, well, we don't, can't get emotional because that's not God. That's not the truth. I know all of you guys know that. But aren't you glad that God has emotions? I mean, I consider myself real emotional. And I just am so happy that he has emotions. He can make us feel happy. He can make us feel comforted. When we, we need comfort, he can make us feel loved. When we need love, he can make us feel, uh, when we feel alone, he can make us feel like he's our best friend. He just has everything we need. He really does. And um, sometimes uh, we can get, and circumstances can drown out um, our hearts, can become kind of, Mike calls it kind of locked or shut down. Just we can get discouraged because, you know, all of us have been in the same boat where family members or whatever. Circumstances didn't quite go the way you thought they were going to go or your kids didn't quite do what you thought they were going to do or, God, when are you going to answer my prayer about this and that? And sometimes you can just get weary and um, discouraged. And your heart can kind of get shut down. And sometimes people, when they do that, they... Um, they don't run to God. They kind of just stay away from God because they feel embarrassed. Because they're not full of faith and powerful and overcoming the devil. They think, God's not going to really like me if I come to him depressed, discouraged, worried, all of those things. But you know, that's not true. It says, um, there's a part in, this, in the Song of Solomon where it says, even though I'm dark, I'm lovely. Yeah. And that means even though we struggle, you know, we struggle. We just are human beings. We struggle. Yeah, with weaknesses. The Lord says we're lovely. Because he, the Lord is looking for the little place in our heart that says yes to Him. That's all He's looking for. And I know we, we have this thing in our, our Sozo model, um, which is when you go to the Lord and you really can't feel anything and you want to receive from Him, the first thing you do is say, who do I need to forgive? Who do I, who do I need to forgive Jesus or Papa? And that begins to unlock your heart and then you can connect and, and dialogue. He wants us to dialogue with Him. Um, we can also encounter Jesus through prayer and um, the Song of Solomon is this is probably one of my favorite um, verses uh, when actually when you feel his presence real strong uh, you can say this to him it's in song of solomon 4 9 it's um this is how he feels about us he says you have ravished my heart i mean when you think about that the god of the universe yeah. <laughs> we me, little old me, I ravish your heart. <laughs> yes, we do. That's how he feels about us. And uh, when the worship group, I don't know, when they were leading, I just saw God. You're, you love worshiping him, and you just love it. I can tell you love it, and you're so excited about it. And I just saw the Lord. He feels the same way about you guys when you do that. He loves you. He's so excited about you. He is just dancing with you, and he just wants to show you off because he is just so proud of you guys. But um, when it says, we can say, Lord, you mean I ravish your heart? And first, and then we say, thank you, Lord, that I've ravished your heart. And, and then it says, your love is better than wine. And we, we say back, thank you, Lord. We can, we, we can reach dialogue with these things that are in the song. And, um, and you can ask as you're prayer reading, show me more, Lord, how I ravish your heart. Show me more. Show me more. Um, show, me, show me more about the truth that my love for you is better than the wine. And what that means is better than the wine of this world. They call the wine means the pleasures of this world. Mm -hmm. And um, 
It says, in the grace of God, number six on your notes, our experience of God's love is not to be quenched nor drowned by any flood. That means the cares and the discouragements of life. Many have a quenched heart in which the ability to experience to feel God's love has been drowned by the disappointments of life. If we embrace the song of Solomon, his ability to unlock our hearts by God's fire love. The fire of God's love. That's what we want. In Song of Solomon 8, chap chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, it says, Set me, and you can pray this to the Lord, Set me, Jesus, as a seal upon your heart. For love, God's love, is as strong as death. His love is as strong as death. Nothing can take away His love for you. Nothing. Its flames are flames of fire. Many waters, persecution, sin, condemnation, pressure, cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. And then in the song, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, which that means his word. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his word, for your love is better than wine. Uh, the word of God was what proceeds from God's mouth. Our heart can only live by which comes from the word of God. So his word came from his mouth. So those words came from his mouth. So it's like his word is kissing our heart. And for 3,000 years, the rabbis have referred to the kisses of the mouth of this verse as the kiss of the Torah. So even the rabbis are saying that. <clears throat> that he might make you know that men shall not live by bread alone, but by man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And um, there's a big movement in uh, Kansas City with the young people. There's a lot of young people going there and getting this message. And if you go on IHOP.org, you can press on prayer room. And they're all in there doing two-hour sets, 24, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They're, they're actually singing about this. They're singing about God's love for us and our love for God. So if you ever get off track and you want to get back on, it's like the train track, click on IHOP.org prayer room, free. They are singing this. This can get you back on track. Plus they're interceding for other things you can join in with intercession. Um, and, you know, it's really cool because there's all these young people. They're going there. And it's really exciting. We have... Um, kind of a movement starting in our area, in our town, with these young people yeah. in their early 20s, starting, they call it Heavenly House of Prayer, because we have Heavenly Ski Resort. Oh, you have a house of prayer here? Yes. Here in this area? Yes. Oh, in your church? Every two weeks. That is so exciting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I'll have to talk to you about that. And um, so, you know, I, I, I'm just excited about what God is doing in, with the young people, bringing them in and using this. And actually, Mike says that God is raising up people who long for the kisses of God's word as their supreme request. Yes. And there are many necessary things to ask for. They are secondary. The greatest prayer of faith is to receive grace, to love God with all your heart and strength, and to restore the first commandment to first place which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And God designed us so that experiencing His love is the most pleasurable reality available <clears throat> to the human makeup. We were created to love God with all of our heart. When we do not love God with a passionate heart, then our emotional life is out of balance. Many of the body of Christ are suffering from spiritual boredom, because they are not passionate in their pursuit of God. The ultimate purpose and meaning of our life is to experience intimacy with God. The absolute definition of success is to be wholehearted lover of God. When we know that we are loved by God and desire to be a wholehearted lover of God, then we are truly successful. When we settle that in our mind and heart, all the unnecessary chatter in our minds about who we are and what we are is silenced and 
It's like, you know, when, you go, when you're going through, I'm not this, I'm not that. I wish I was this, I wish I was that. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have, wouldn't have done this. I wish I would have went to college. I wish I would have, wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> when the Lord says, go, I'm successful because I am a lover of the God of the universe. How much more successful can you get? We are in relationship, in love, and he's in love with us. We are co-partnering with the God of the universe. Um, so therefore, we are successful. Amen? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the theme of the song is the bride's spiritual journey, journey to be drawn near to Jesus in intimacy and to run in deep partnership with him in intimacy. And you know, when you when you feel weary or tired, I always just say, Lord, draw me and I will run. Draw me and I will run. Yeah, draw me, Lord. Draw me, Lord, and I will run. Draw us, Lord, and we will run. You know, and I just appreciate all of you ladies and your perseverance through the years and you're still going for it for God and standing in this region. You know, my husband was just saying there, there was an article in Time magazine a few years ago about the most unchristian people, unchurched areas in the United States. And this is one. This whole Northern California, Oregon, Washington is, so it's almost like a mission field. Yeah, we're lights. And us in, you know, we're California, Nevada, half Lake Tahoe's California, Nevada. We have now, the Lord's blessed us with we have a network of churches, a lot of them from Nevada. Um, it's exciting. And they're actually opening up opening up a house of prayer, get this, in the capital, in Carson City. Starting, I think, next month, a prayer room in the capital of Nevada. So I just think that's so neat. The Lord is just moving in this area. They call them prayer furnaces, especially in this end time move. Uh, we're really going to need this. We're going to be, be co, uh, co partnering in these prayer rooms with praying into what, into being what God is wanting to do. We're going to be co partnering, co, co laboring with Him, praying into being what He wants to do, especially in these end times. So even though it's scary times, it's exciting times because we're going to see God move like we've never seen before. And we're going to see his power like we've never seen before. And we just need to keep our connection. You know, in the Sozo ministry, which she was, Linda was talking about, our ministry is all about getting you connected. And it's all about coming and getting connected and encountering the Lord. I get to sit in twice a week or three times a week with people encountering the Lord. It's the coolest thing. And he is always so happy. And he's always blowing people's mind with how happy he is. <laughs> So be excited. We live in exciting times. And stay connected to your bridegroom, God. And I hope the notes, take the notes home with you. Study them, look over them, and um, put them into practice. Thank you for having me. Let me just add a note to the Sozo. Actually, Cheryl, what does Sozo mean? Saved, healed, and delivered. Yeah, it's in the Greek. That's what the word sozo means in Greek. It means saved, healed, and delivered. And it is so foundational. I don't know. I know there's some ministries that actually require people on their staff and people in their church to go through a sozo ministry uh, just as a good house cleaning to, to get you ready for, you know, your life in Christ and break off all the old lies of the enemy and... Uh, to really, it's, it's used powerfully to, to really set you free. I know in my encounter, um, you know, you just don't even realize how much the personality of your own earthly father gets imposed on our idea of who God is, our Heavenly Father is. Yeah. And my, uh, my father was physically present but very emotionally absent. And so, I mean, it was a real wake-up call for me to go through the sozo and begin to open up those that revelation, those lines of connection of, you know, intimacy with the Father, and it was so, so true when we, we um, you know, we like Jesus, we love Jesus, but we don't want to have too much to do with the Father. I did in my own personal life, so. That's very uh, common. 
Pardon? That's very, very common. common, yeah. So, you know, if that something's kind of uh, triggered your heart, maybe you've gotten to a certain, cards too. Yeah, a certain place in your spiritual development, maybe you feel you kind of hit a wall and, and that you want to go further. You want to go into that intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father, but you don't know how to get there. Uh, the Sozo would be an awesome, awesome thing to schedule to with Cheryl and her partner up there at Lake Tahoe Christian Fellowship too. It is a, it's a wonderful personal investment, not only for you, but the more, more healed you are, the more effective you are in the kingdom. And then your, your healing and your wholeness radiates out. It, it draws other people to you. And, you know, then the ripples and the waves continue to go. That domino effect continues to, to go. Jesus is the Lord who reigns You 
Yeah. 